conference we're having, amen? I'm here to talk to you about statistics. We like numbers in this movement, amen? Because it illustrates the glory of God. I want you to take your Bible and open it up to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. The Bible shows us the heart of the brothers and sisters that reach the world in their generation. And the kind of heart that we're going to have to have if we're going to reach the world in our generation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. But we know brothers loved by God. Good to read the brothers today, man. But he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. That, brothers, is what the internet ministry is doing. God is taking his gospel and his message of this movement and putting it on the desktops and PCs, not just in America, but in 50 nations. There are people listening to sermons and watching sermons from all over the world getting inspired to be a part of something that is changing it. We can preach the word of God that's being piped to PCs or we can send pornography to PCs. Satan is using the internet as well. Thank you, Michael, for illustrating his destructive plan. It's alive at work and well in, in the darkness of cyberspace, but so is the penetrating power of our God. Putting freedom and a message of freedom on every PC. You know, almost a terabyte of sermon materials downloaded every month. A terabyte? What's a terabyte, bro? I better amen. Look like I know what I'm talking about. Amen. A terabyte's a lot. Amen. Amen. Is that a lot? Bro, how much is that? There's about 100 megabytes on an average hard drive of a computer. That's 100 hard drives full of sermons. Full of God's Word. Imagine 100 computers full of just nothing but sermon materials. Listening and watching. Every single month. Thousands of people are being impacted, guys. Thousands of sermons are being downloaded. People's lives are being impacted by what God is doing. And you got to say, it's not just the United States, guys. We have brothers who work very hard and sisters who work very hard to translate everything into their language. We got 11 different languages on the internet ministry, guys. We got the likes of Maxim. He's got a team of Russian translators. They work hard, guys. To make, Russian is not an easy language to translate, amen. I had a sister yesterday volunteer to do Chinese. I'm like, amen. If you got language skills out there, the Lord needs you to get his message to your people. Amen? Now, I want to talk about what the three of us guys do. The Internet Boys. Or as DJ, DJ so candidly put it, the Worldwide Weirdos. WWF, baby. Worldwide Freedom. Ron Harding is our lead cyber evangelist. He's in charge of disaster recovery, plans of action and procedures. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me explain it for a second, okay? How many people got a car? Raise your hand. Okay. How many people have had a blowout before? Raise your hand. How many people expected that blowout? Raise your hand. You know what? Did you have a spare? We got a spare tire right now. The internet ministry, it's got a spare, and Ron is in charge of making sure the thing gets put on when we have that blowout. Because if you got a car, you're going to have a flat, amen? Just like anything, computers wear out. And you got to have a disaster recovery plan, or as we'd like to say, a spare tire. He also monitors all the infrastructure, the hardware, makes sure everything's running and fine-tuned correctly. And he makes sure that me and Rob aren't being artistically creative and kind of out to lunch, you know what I'm saying? Making sure we're getting discipled and staying organized. 
He's a great project manager and a great brother, and he's inspired because he works with all of his might on the internet ministry. Now, I, I write code. Some of you walked up to me earlier this, this, this last week and said, what are you working on? It looks like, you know, Chinese or something. No, it's, it's code. I, I write the software for Upside Down 21. That's what I do. And, and I, do, uh, I do security and, and, and systems engineering, network engineering. I make sure stuff connects and works right. And that nobody can sneak in and like, like they did one year and put the F word on our homepage. And I'm not talking about faith, amen. What else I do is I maintain the DNS resolution of all of our sites. The DNS, what, Huda? Everybody's got a phone number, right? I mean, if you want to call up Jeremiah Clark and Eugene, right? You say, I'm going I'm to give Jeremiah a call. You don't go, I'm going to call 541, yada, 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 yada. You're like, what are you talking about? I'm going to call 541, blah, 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 Who are you going to call, bro? Well, I'm going to call 541. And I know you're going to call a phone number. Who are you going to call? I'm going to call Jeremiah Clark. We understand that, don't we? Well, see, every computer's got a phone number. And you can't, like, just, you don't type in 207, you know, 236-214.208. You don't type that to get the upside down 21, do you? Well, maybe if you're Ron Robert, you do, but amen. <laughs> DNS is what connects all the normal names of the computers to all the phone numbers of the computers. So if you don't dial the right number, do you get the right person? Right, if you don't have the right IP address to the right name, you don't get the right computer. Amen? Amen. I get to figure all the technical details out. Amen? I just want to explain so we understand it. And i got to make sure things are optimized for performance. It's got to work good. It can't be slow. Now, if, if it works good and it's not slow, and you can get to the website, but it's ugly. It's like looking at a car that should, you know, can run fast, but it's got all that primer and that missing hinge and all that. You know what I'm talking about, guys? The guy that's got that car that he's kind of working on, but it looks ugly. You don't care how it runs. You're going to buy that car if it looks ugly. People are going to come back to websites if it looks ugly. And it takes a lot of creativity, talent, and acumen in the design world to make our sites look great. Let me tell you, Rob Onakea works very hard yeah. to make our sites look all world, to change the world. Rob also does the technical support. We have a website, support.usd21.org. Did I mention that we have a website, support.usd21.org? Did I mention that? Then we have the support website, support.usd21.org. So if there's a problem with any of your websites, not just, not just Upside Down 21, but any website, you can go to that website and Rob, myself and Rob will get an email saying, hey, this is a problem. Amen? Because if you've got a car, you're going to have problems. Sometimes it needs an oil change and some gas. If you've got a website, it's going to have problems. Sometimes you can need some help with your code or, you know, I'm talking about web administrators. There's a lot of web administrators out there who work very hard like Chuck Hess, like the brother in Syracuse. Come on, Dave. Brother works hard. Carl Wick's one of the most hardest working translators I know. And he does a video for the Spanish as well. Wow. There's a lot of people out there who make this ministry incredible. Oh, and I want to put before you that if you've got the gift of administration, you, you know how to sling code or translate a language, or you know what system administration means. God has got a use for you. You can help penetrate the darkness using new technology. Now, I want to put before you guys that in the beginning of the first century, God set up to where Rome would conquer every city that it came across and build roads between city and city. God set up that they would use the same currency and that they would speak the same language. The Romans forced them to learn their language and their culture and spend their money. Now, God is using the internet to connect the nations together again and people are learning English in countries you can't even remember. And pe pe people are being connected by this, guys. And it's transforming lives one by one and bringing them here. It's a great net. The dot net to help us get dot org so we can get the dot Jesus instead of the dot com out there. You know what I'm talking about? I would like to call up our brother Ron Harding to give us some vision. Amen. All right, amen. I want to give you guys a vision. The USD 21 vision. And that is to create a worldwide network that shows off your website to the whole world. To create a worldwide network on the back end that lets all the churches communicate seamlessly so that we can have 
a knowledge of what the true membership is, so that we can know what the attendances are, so that we can encourage one another, and so that we can spur one another on in the Lord. Amen? Amen. You know, we're multiplying churches much faster than we did with Boston. Your support is crucial in keeping this going. You know, the reason why we're able to multiply churches so much faster is because we are able to get into every single living room that has a computer all around the world. And I really want you to think about that. You know, I want you to turn your Bibles right now to 1 Peter chapter 4. Because we've all been given a gift. You know, the Bible says that to some are given to be prophets. Some are given to be evangelists. Some teachers, some administrators, and, and then some are given to be computer geeks. Amen, that's God's lot for me. But you know, it says in 1 Peter 4, verse, 9, verse 10, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace. You know, everybody's gift is to be an administrator. You are to administer God's grace using whatever gift God's given you. And, and you know, I, I love the Internet boys. I really love that because it's the first time I've been called a boy in a very long time. But, you know, if you look at this team and you look at the power of God and how he set it up, you got Jeremy, who's a mechanic. He can make anything work. You got Rob, who can make everything beautiful in its time. And then you've got someone who can think about the big picture and help piece it all together. It, you, you know, God has set it up where I helped put together lots of companies. As we bought companies, I was the guy in charge of merging them all and helping them all communicate with one another. And functioning as one unified movement. Not like Worldcon did, keeping everybody separate. But actually working as one unified movement, working all in the same spirit. And I promise you, this internet ministry will help this movement operate as one unified movement. Amen? But you know, it says here in verse 11, If anyone speaks, he should do it as the one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves. And, and, and you know, we just got to pause right there for a second. You know, Rob and Jeremy work very hard Amen. doing other things other than cyber ministry. That's right. Jeremy works a full-time job now. He was a minister running a church, working full-time. And he, held, he handled this all on his own for many years. And I'll give him a hand for that. Right. Rob works full-time as a consultant. Making flyers for you. Building websites for you. And he pours his heart into this. You know, and I, I run a church, and I'm helping oversee all of this. You, you know, do you serve? I, I want to challenge you right now. What is your gift? And if you've got a gift, are you using it to faithfully administer grace? See, that's got to be the end goal, is for people to find grace and get saved all over the world. It's the very reason why our movement is growing, because these men have poured their lives out using their gift. Amen. Now I want to talk to you, what do, we, what do we use your money for? You know, first of all, we got to thank the people that have been given money. You know, L.A., Phoenix, Honolulu, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Syracuse, and San Francisco have been given their money. If you're not in one of those cities, you have a website because of all those other cities. That's right. Thank you so much. Amen. But like Michael shared, like Michael shared, the costs are increasing. We're growing exponentially, and so the costs are increasing exponentially. And so, as Chris Broom said, it's time to show us the money amen. so we can keep it up. Amen? amen? What you get in services, you've got to understand this. What we provide with Upside Down 20 is not just hosting of the website and getting your email. You know, Jeremy has written a custom player that allow you to pull sermons from any church in the movement. If you hear a cool sermon and you like it, you can actually put it on your website just by putting in one line of code. You get the movement's articles. 
And you get a worldwide church directory. Wow. And many people are trying to manually keep that thing up to date. Don't try and keep up with that. You ain't going to keep up, okay, guys? They're adding too fast. You've got to pull it from upside down 21. And, 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 you know, I just want to talk about some highlights here. You know, this year Rob has created a brand new template to be used on the websites. It's already ready for the sermons to be put up. It's already ready for your calendar. It's already ready for the newsletter. It's already ready for you to just put your information in so the entire world can see it. Amen? In Acts 16, verse 4 and 5, it says, As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. In the internet ministry, we're traveling from computer to computer, delivering the decisions made by the central movement, central leadership in this movement, to the sold-out discipling movement, so that you can be strengthened in your faith, because this movement is growing daily in numbers. Let's use our gifts faithfully. Amen? Have an awesome day. Amen. Turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 2. I I have the privilege of sharing some of the things, the exciting things that the three of us are doing here with uh, the internet ministry as well as some of the other things. In uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 4 it says, Now I am about to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God and to dedicate it to him for burning fragrant incense before him, for setting out the consecrated bread regularly and for making burnt offerings every morning and evening and on Sabbaths and new moons. And then in verse 5 it says, The temple I am going to build will be great because our God is greater than all other gods. But who is able to build a temple for him since the heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain him? Who then am I to build a temple for him except as a place to burn sacrifices for him? Basically, myself, Ron, and Jeremy, we are the masons in uh, God's new digital temple. Uh, what we do is, is very integral. You know, I, I feel very blessed to, to have partners to uh, help us to achieve what we're trying to do with, with the Internet. I mean, everybody is affected by the Internet somehow. I mean, we've all been affected at the amount of pornography that's out there. We all spend time on Facebook. I've seen a lot of you on Facebook popping up chats and stuff. You guys all use MySpace. You guys all have email one way or another. So we are all impacted by that. Um, Some of the things that we've been really working on lately is uh, we we worked on a staff site for the ministry um, to help to propel the movement so that everything is organized so that you as a church are, are able to function you know, a lot better and have resources online available for your church to function. We have uh, staff and leadership training. We have legal resources for you administrators, forms, you know, benevolent forms for those single brothers that, that may need it from time to time. Uh, we have the first principle studies as well as, you know, just centralized administration um, so that you can go on your website like Michael talked about and you can see who's been to church, where's our contribution at, uh, how many visitors do we have and how many baptisms we have. Uh, one of the other things we did, Jeremy talked about, was a support.usd21 website, which is going to allow us to train future web administrators and cyber deacons and, and whatnot to, to learn how to do all this nifty stuff that we do so that you can support your church, whether it's shooting video of baptisms, restorations, just powerful testimonies that you guys want to share with everybody. That's going to be set up for that. Um, recently, Ron spent tireless hours importing a lot of the uh, bulletins for over the past 30 years. Uh, and just, they're, they're books in binders. And uh, Ron spearheaded that, had them all scanned, and inputted them manually into a database so that you can go on there now and you can see articles from 10, 15, 20 years ago and see how God is still moving. I mean, you could read the, the historical bulletins now and Kip still preaches the same powerful message. Yeah. Nothing has changed. He's still awesome. We're still learning and we're going. So I just want to give Ron props to that. The next phase that we're working with that is we're going to be putting sermons for the last 20 to 30 years online. Amen. A lot of you may not remember what a cassette is, but it's a little thing that you put into a player. It's got these wheels in it, you know. Everybody's so CD and MP3 driven now. So we have the privilege of capturing all of that audio so that you guys can hear all the sermons. And it's, it's just going to be an amazing thing when it gets done. 
We're also working on revisiting and revising the City of Angels Church website. Uh, we've had it for the past two and a half years and it's been awesome, but what we're going to be doing is building more resources for the ministry and hopefully it'll be a template so that each church website will have those type of resources available. Um, like each region will have their own little uh, page on the site. So for instance, you'll have north.ciicc.net, ams.ciicc.net. So that way each ministry can take ownership uh, of a certain part of their website so they can show the baptism, so they can show the uh, special events that are going on, so they can just be encouraging and, and share the, the word uh, and the message with everybody that's going on right now. And uh, that's hopefully going to be get going this week, preferably. Um, one of the, the major projects that we've been working on is the release of Upside Down version 2, Upside Down 21 version 2. And we are super excited. I mean, Jeremy has been working timeless, staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning, typing code. It looks like the Matrix if you ever see his computer. It's just green letters and it's like, it'll blow your mind. Uh, and we've been just working nonstop to, to build a, a portal online for all the churches internationally. Um, it's going to have articles from from Kip, from every church available on the front page, sermons from every church available, accessible anywhere, um, so that each church can input their articles and their sermons, and all you have to do is uh, type in their name, and you'll have everything from that person, um, and you'll be able to share that. And I think that's key, especially when it comes to some of the outside churches, like in Chennai and in Russia, people that don't get the fellowship that, that we in America get so spoiled by sometimes. And, and it'll give it a resource so that everybody will be able to, to take part in that, and it's going to be incredible. We're going to build um, resources to, to have quiet time database in there. So, you know, sometimes you wake up, you have no inspiration of what to read, we're going to provide it for you. So all you have to do is go to the website, and we want to give you a reason to come back and just see the awesome things that God is working on. Um, well, the first principle studies are always all going to be there, so you can download them at any time and be prepared. And um, that's going to be incredible. And that we're hoping to launch this weekend. Wow. So be checking UpsideDown21.org this week. It'll have a brand new facelift, and, and it'll be glorious for God. Uh, the last thing that I want to throw before you guys is we, we have just developed a, a discipleship media which is a conglomerate. It's sort of like a KNN meets DPI. And uh, what we're doing is we're creating um, media for the kingdom. Media as in videos, sermons, um, comes to you know, audio that you hear, books, uh, pamphlets, brochures, flyers that uh, hopefully everybody gets to use. Because we want to give you the tools that are going to make evangelizing that much easier. I mean, you can have a little business card with your name scribbled on and say, hey, I want to invite you to my church. Or you can pull out a fat little brochure and say, hey, I really want you to come to my church. I'm fired up. This proves it. Come on out and check it out. You know what I'm saying? And we also, we're also going to be developing an online version of how KNN was uh, through podcasts. Uh, DJ in the New York church did an awesome job with, with their church because they, they just show the baptisms and nothing moves your heart than seeing people get baptized. Hearing them preach and give their testimony about how God has changed their life. I mean, it makes me cry every time I see that and I just see God moving. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. And so that's why we're going to have that more. We're going to get videos from baptisms all over the world from different baptisms so that people can share and celebrate with those baptisms. And... Um, Lastly, Matthew 5, verse 14 reads, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and give it to light everyone in the house. You know, in a time right now where the internet is so prevalent with pornography, sin, I mean, you name it, we're trying to provide light on the net so that you can have a holy and a righteous experience when you are online instead of allowing it to be filled with, with garbage and, and all this junk that just weighs our hearts down. I mean, everybody here, I'm sure, has, has struggled with some form of impurity online. I mean, it's just the fact of life. I mean, that's the biggest business on the internet right now. What we're trying to do is provide it for God. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.